All right, guys, we're about to drop four vintage etched glass plates off a second story balcony. You might be thinking, is this dumb, Rachel? Is this overkill, Rachel? Is this necessary, Rachel? I'm here to tell you it is all those things. Let's see what happens. Hey resellers, thanks so much for tuning in today. Do you ever wonder what link do I need to go to to ensure that my package arrives undamaged after being kicked around by USPS, FedEx, and UPS? If so, this video is definitely for you. I promise you we're about to take a pretty in-depth look and a little scientific experiment about different ways that we can package breakable items so that they do survive these shipping services. So stay tuned. All right, guys, I purchased some breakable items. We're gonna start out with four glass plates. I think, um, I think I, maybe I'll just package all four of those. And we're gonna do a really cool thing. After I package up these four solid glass, etched glass plates, I am going to drop them off my second story uh, deck balcony. And we're gonna see if they survive the fall. Oftentimes, I package up my items and hand them to my four-year-old to walk out to the car. I feel like if I cannot hand my packages to my four-year-old who is trying to be careful, they don't stand a chance against USPS because um, I mean they just deal in such volume and such high level you know such the magnitude of packages that they go through uh, you know there is a white glove service available with USPS but it's like $12 an item and it goes into a separate cart so you could consider that if you have something extremely rare and fragile and breakable I would strongly consider that recently though I mailed $350 worth of irreplaceable vintage dishes plus shipping uh, so the buyer was all in at almost $400. I mailed those across the country from Missouri to California using the method that I'm about to show you. So let's see what it looks like. All right, guys, I cannot fully take credit for this idea. I need to credit my mastermind engineer of a 14 year old, Dello. Um, thank you so much for thinking about this. Recently in their engineering class, actually, they had to devise a way for, you know, they were doing that classic egg drop experiment. And the way that he devised to protect the egg from, again, a very high drop was to take two car wash sponges and hollow out one section on each of them, nestle the egg between the two and tie it together with rubber bands. Um, he tested it at school and then he brought it home and he tested it and I watched him drop it off the second story balcony and the egg was unharmed. And so I thought, how could I implement that on a larger scale to ship extremely fragile and breakable things? So you guys, the longer and longer I thought about it, I thought I don't really want to buy a ton of car wash sponges, so let me show you what I bought instead. The more I thought about it, I thought, man, a mattress topper is about the same type of density. Um, they're not extremely dense. I, I think you can get some that are more dense or less dense, but this is about, I would say the density may be a little less firm than a magic eraser. And this actually comes in different zones. So you're gonna see a, you know, a plethora of different uh, textures about this. So they may be suitable for different, um, different packing options. So you guys, I have been cutting this up and using it as packing material. Someone recently also told me that it's not just the uh, force that breaks an object, but the vibration and the sound waves as well. Uh, maybe no different than an opera singer breaking a glass. I'm not really sure if there's science behind that, but hey, it makes sense. And if that's another way that my objects are getting broken, let's use a sound dampening and a wave dampening material like this and see if I can package these four vintage etched glass plates. I bought these for 25 cents a piece. Um, when they don't break, I will sell them on my eBay, but I'm gonna try to package these four using this in free priority mail boxes. And uh, let's see how this goes, you guys. Okay, I understand that it's really important when shipping breakables to float the box inside of another box. So I've actually taken this regional Ray A box. It's kind of irrelevant what my sizes are and I cut down the sides of it to make it a little bit smaller so that once I stuff the plates inside this, I will be able to put some uh, padding in here, float that box and then pad it more around it. So these are gonna be doubly padded and um, those small plates will be inside this box, inside this box. Let's see you guys. 
Okay, so this is what I was talking about there being different textures and different zones. This um, is actually thicker because there's a smaller texture uh, dipped down into it, but this one has a deeper groove texture, so that makes the material overall thinner. Um, and then these are, I don't know, I guess about a medium. So you're getting four different thicknesses. This one is definitely the thickest because, you know, the padding is almost, almost whole. It barely has a little bit of indentation to it. So um, I'm actually going to start out with these to pad these and put them inside the smaller box. Okay, so I now have cut four of these so that I can um, nestle a piece of padding and a plate. A piece of padding and a plate. I don't know if um, if this would necessarily even be necessary for a shipment. You know, you might be able to get away with bubble wrap and then use the padding around it. But guys, we're about to drop this off a second story balcony. Like I'm trying to show you guys some uh, like military grade way to ship your items. So we're gonna do it. We are just going to stick with the plan here and layer this thing like a daggum tiramisu. That is pretty hefty looking. Might have to change the size box that I'm working with, but I am really liking where this is going. Let's, um, for extra, let's, let's put a little piece there on the top as well. Maybe two pieces on the top. All right, I'm liking where this is going so far. All right, I decided I could actually float this without it being completely a box, so I cut the top off of it. So that is now going to float inside here. I'm gonna lay my dishes inside on top of that, and then I have a little bit of space I can still pad around this. All right, guys, this is what we're working with. I have nestled the plates inside the tray-like box. I put my two pieces on top, and then I surrounded the sides of the tray-like box with these, so this will all have to smash a little bit just to close the box and I think that that's going to protect everything really well. I am about to either fail miserably and shatter these vintage etched glass plates or blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Comment below before I get started here and tell me, do you think that these are going to survive a second story fall from the balcony? Guys, I feel really good about how rigid this is, but in true shipping form, I'm actually really in a hurry because my kids are getting out of school early today and um, I have to go pick them up here shortly. So, I mean, how true is that to reselling life? You're always in a hurry when you're shipping stuff out, so, whoops. Oh no, oh, is it gonna survive USPS? Let's go see. Ooh, I actually just thought of something. So the, the plates are packed up in here now. And I thought, man, what if somebody thinks that maybe I'm opening it up after, like, like I opened it up before I dropped it. Um, we're gonna make a big X. Everyone has a method of shipping breakable items. Um, at least you should. You should not be afraid of shipping breakables. Everyone has a method, but are you so confident in your shipping method for fragile and breakable and irreplaceable items that you're willing to throw it off of a second story balcony? I am. All right guys, we're about to drop four vintage etched glass plates off a second story balcony. You might be thinking, is this dumb, Rachel? Is this overkill, Rachel? Is this necessary, Rachel? I'm here to tell you it is all those things. Let's see what happens. Truth be told, will this ever make it onto YouTube if it doesn't work? <laughs> if it doesn't work, yes, it will make it on there because I'm gonna keep trying. But guys, I think it's gonna work. My plates are in there. Don't mind my non-spring cleaned flower beds there with the bricks everywhere. Should I just toss it? Should I drop it gently? Okay, second story balcony here, you guys. I didn't hear like a shatter or anything. That sounded serious though. A moment for the plates. Thank you for possibly giving your lives in the name of shipping science. I hope that the way that I dropped it wasn't anticlimactic for anyone, but I'm sure that's exactly how it gets dropped in the USPS warehouse. So we're gonna go down, <laughs> down the, the deck stairs here and retrieve the package. All right guys, I feel like we were either wildly successful or um, or I just broke four plates. Let's see what happens. X marks the spot, still an X on my box here. All right. Do you think that they're whole? You guys saw it fall. One plate. Two 
two plates. Guys, I threw this off a second story balcony. Three plates. Oh, I thought there was a crack. There's not a crack. Four plates, you guys. Whole and unharmed. Am I suggesting that you do this for a $5 sale? Probably not. The cost of the twin size extra twin, it's a twin, twin extra large um, mattress protector, mattress pad is $9.98 at Walmart. I will get several uses out of that. So honestly, I, I don't know that it's that much more than bubble wrap. Um, it's a lot more protective, but we're not done. I have fragile fine china. I have two fine china teacups and I have a plate and I have a glass vase. Let's drop some more stuff. Okay, let's do the next one. I am going to ship these two little teacups. Now these are like pretty thin from fine china here, you guys. It just says uh, made in Japan at the bottom. These are a beautiful, um, like a, I don't know, it's got like a cross stitch pattern on it there. I paid 25 cents for each teacup to show you guys and 50 cents, so another dollar going into this experiment. Um, I'll probably keep my box pretty much the same as far as floating it, and I'm going to wrap these up in, with with the, the mattress padding. So I'll probably wrap this up and then um, make sure that the handles are wrapped as well and put it in here. Okay, so this does look a little crude. I don't know, I might dress it up a little bit if I were actually shipping it out, but honestly, I feel like buyers are looking for practicality and good protection in their shipping more than they're looking for aesthetics. So one important thing though, I, I taped this up to keep the, the mattress padding on the cup as I wanted it, but I did not tape it tight. There's still a lot of give here because if you tape it really tight, you may as well not have the mattress padding there. So see, this is what it looked like before I did the second cross and you see how it's coming out. I don't want that. So I'm I'm gonna put another piece across how this has you know like an X pattern I'm gonna put one more piece across on here and then I will just layer two pieces around the plate Okay guys, let's see if the teacups and the fine china plate um, survive the drop. My husband was recording that and I said, what do you think? You think it survived the drop? And he said, I'd actually be surprised if it didn't. So, thanks for having faith in me, babe. All right, is my buyer satisfied? Am I getting positive feedback on this? Everything's looking good so far. Teacup number one is whole. Guys, fine china teacup here. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's the best shipping method that ever hit the internet, but show me a better one. That's all I'm saying. All right, <laughs> this one is whole. Again, I probably wouldn't use it on an extremely inexpensive item, you know, like a $5 item, but you can use this packing material for several different items for, again, a cost of only $10. And here's the plate, you guys. There's not a chip, there's not a scratch. I feel better about this than I do um, newspaper, than I do bubble wrap, than I do styrofoam. I feel like styrofoam is rigid. It can help fill gaps, but it can't do what this this can do this dampens sound this dampens vibrations it, this um, is going to be you know impact resistant as far as scratches um, I just I feel good about this packing material for a lot of different reasons okay I have saved for last the most delicate item and I feel like this is the most delicate because it has a void in it so um, will we need to do something with the void should I also stuff some of this inside there I think I will um, and we are gonna see, I mean, I wouldn't walk right out right now and drop this off the second story and expect it not to break. So let's, let's pad this and let's see what we can do to protect it from USPS. 
Okay guys, I, I don't know, I didn't really like wrap the vase. I, I should have showed you before I closed it up. I didn't really wrap it up so much. I just kind of shoved a bunch of this, this packing around it. I did shove one small piece inside of it. And to be honest, the package bulges a little bit there at the top. So I don't know, is this one gonna make it? One final test. Oh, you guys, it's really starting to cloud up out here now. I have a V on the box this time for a vase. You guys didn't get to see this one being packed up. And then um, I thought, should I aim for some of those bricks so it has a harder impact? <laughs> I'm just having fun with the experiment at this point. So let's see what happens. I'm just gonna really toss it out there. Let's make this thing tumble. Guys, if that impact looks um, slight, it is not. That actually got a grass stain on the box that time. So um, here, let's let's be a little extra hard with this one. Okay, with this particular package, let's just like throw it over there. Whoops, it just fell in a hole. Yes, that is, that is probably pretty typical. And um, let's just throw it up here on the concrete as well. Ah, oh, that wasn't hard enough. Let's do it one more time, you guys. If anything's gonna break, it's gonna be this vase this time, right? All right, let's take it inside. Let's see if it's broken. All right, guys, here is my <laughs> now dirt-stained and grass-stained package with the V on it for vase. Let's see. Let's see if it survived all that. I feel like we kind of we kind of put the most delicate piece it was the largest and it has a void and it's kind of a thin glass and we kind of put it through the hardest test. <laughs> oh no. It's whole! Oh guys, this looks great. Yeah, like this is exactly as I put it in there. You know what, that gets me to thinking like, what will this thing actually survive? You wanna see? Okay, so I was thinking what else could this thing maybe survive and my lovely assistant Drew, my husband here, is gonna help me. Honey, <laughs> let's see what it'll survive. Give it a go. Oh my gosh, it just went in through the woods. Okay, I have to stop using so much tape. Let's see if it survived being drop kicked across the yard. It's whole! What are we gonna have to do to this thing? Let's try something else. Oh, you guys, this definitely is starting to look like something that I have had delivered to my home before. He broke the box. You broke my box. <laughs> <sighs> Do you think it survived that? I like, I heard something that might have been glass shattering. It's alive. How could it survive something like that? below if this isn't the best shipping hack that you've ever seen in your life. Give this video a thumbs up if you're going to be using this. And I wanted to also inform you guys of a channel that I watch. He's not afraid of buying and flipping and shipping breakables. His name is Gino and you can find him on the link in my description over to Gino's channel, uh, Gino Finds. And he is super delightful guy to watch. He is in Hollywood, Florida and um, originally from the Jersey area. So you definitely detect that in his accent, but he is just just so super laid back and fun to watch and he puts so much knowledge and information into his videos he has a really great crowd over there so you definitely want to be one of Gino's subscribers um, you can use hacks like this to ship breakable things and quit leaving profits in the thrift stores in the antique malls at the yard sales because you're afraid of shipping breakable items comment below and let me know if you have ever used mattress pad and protector to ship an item and thank you guys so much for watching God bless and remember treat your business like your business
Sounds broken. Yeah, most likely. I bet it was something nice though. Dad, these bloopers are for you. Uh oh, sounds broken. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I bet it was something nice though. You're okay, ready? Uh oh, sounds broken. Most likely. <laughs> I bet it was something nice though. <laughs> right. Uh oh, sounds broken. Most likely. I bet it's something nice though. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds broken. Most likely. I bet it's something nice though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those will be the bloopers, right? <laughs> uh oh, sounds broken. Most likely. I bet it's something nice though. <laughs>